Tropical Storm Barrel is likely to become a hurricane again as it makes its way towards Texas in the coming 36 to 48 hours. With landfall expected Monday morning there between Corpus Christi and Houston, you see a lot of that heavy rain indicated on this model for eastern Texas, parts of Louisiana, and Arkansas on Monday. From there, we'll see impacts push northeast. Here's our headlines for our July 6th, 2024 weather update. That was just a little sneak peek at what we're going to be talking about in this video because Tropical Storm Barrel, probably soon to be Hurricane Barrel once again, it is making that trek for Texas with heavy rain, very gusty winds, as well as that coastal storm surge concern on the way. We've got inland effects from rain and breezy conditions that will also be in the mix. I've got the details on all of that and the ongoing pattern right here in this video. If you are new to the channel and you enjoy this one, by the way, and you want more tropical and USA weather coverage in the future, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button down below. Now let's go ahead and get into that 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Central Time advisory here on Tropical Storm Barrel on our Saturday evening. The last several hours and really the last couple of days have been a big struggle for Barrel. It has just been overland there of the Yucatan Peninsula. It's just now been back over the Gulf for about a day now. This thing is struggling. It's still sitting at 60 miles per hour with gusts of around 70 miles per hour with moderate northwest movement. The pressure is one thing that is actually really good to see here. It has continued to go up. It's now at 997 millibars. The higher the pressure, the more there is sinking air, and sinking air isn't great for clouds. That means that this thing is remaining disorganized. That's great if you live in Texas, but it is expected to begin to re-strengthen to around 65 miles per hour. Gusts near that Category 1 strength of 75 miles per hour overnight tonight. This is as we go into the wee morning hours of our Sunday, July 7th here, that that is expected. Going on up to a Category 1 hurricane by the middle of the afternoon here on our Sunday. The Hurricane Center, this is the National Hurricane Center's cone, indicating 75 mile per hour sustained winds, gusts to 90. And then the middle of Sunday night heading into early Monday morning is when this will likely reach its peak intensity, probably somewhere in that Cat 1, low end Cat 2 threshold, especially with the winds and the gusts that will come out of them. While sustained winds could be around 85, which is you know, again, a Cat 1, some of those gusts could definitely be well into Cat 2 strength as this pushes really just to the north here of Corpus Christi and just to the south of Bay City. That is the current projection to the southwest of Bay City and Galveston to the north of Corpus Christi. Port Lavaca right in the middle of that track line from the National Hurricane Center. As really the models have locked in on this being the likely scenario at this point, there's probably not going to be too much more shifting Although Houston remains in the cone a little bit further inland here as it curves back towards the northeast. A quickly weakening tropical storm through our late Monday heading into early Tuesday. As you can see, tropical storm conditions near Waco and just to the south there in Texas. By the time this goes towards Palestine and Tyler... In the same state, we're going to be weakening this down towards tropical depression characteristics, and a lot of the rain from that depression or whatever is post-tropical at this time will likely continue towards the Ohio Valley into Wednesday and Thursday. Now, let's take a look at what the models say. That was the National Hurricane Center. Let's use those models. These are the actual ensembles that are made up of several different models. I know that's a big tongue twister there, but the plot is by Tomerberg, that great website there on the bottom right side of your screen. What you notice here is those greens and yellows are where you really want to be looking. So I I've drawn black lines around them so you can see where the most moderate to high chances are for tropical storm barrel, soon to be hurricane barrel more than likely is going to track. Notice right there around Corpus, just to the north side of it as well, that's where that highest consistency is in these ensembles and indicating, okay, we're going to have this system move through here and the impacts will certainly surround that and be a little bit broader around that for sure. So just because the track line goes from there and then eventually weakens there in eastern Texas towards parts of Arkansas, don't think the impacts won't spread outward and then here is the model intensity guidance notice really a lot of these hurricane models which is what these are anyway are really indicating that this thing is not going to make it too much higher than a high end tropical storm or low end cat one hurricane that is good news to see but we still have some shorter range guidance like the nam model it's been really doing some weird stuff out of the storm and trying to strengthen it towards cat three to cat four that is the very high end and unlikely scenario just be prepared on the texas coast though because i do think that peak of these models at least indicates we'll have a cat one hurricane that is why we have hurricane warnings up from Corpus Christi up to around the Bay City area there in Texas. Speaking of these locations, let's go ahead and play things out using the GFS model. It's been great with the storm all along. We're going to use this to play out the storm, even though it's not short-range guidance. I think it does a great job of showing that we've already got some showers and storms on the far outer periphery of this system on our Saturday evening as I film this video, pushing on up there towards the Texas shores as well as the Louisiana shores. Note that the time on your screen, by the way, is in my time zone here in South Carolina, which is Eastern time. For those of you 
you in Texas and Louisiana, just subtract an hour. So this would be 1 p.m. at Central Time as we go into our Sunday. We're probably going to see a strengthening tropical storm. A lot of the impacts on that west side here, bringing some rainfall, already touching those southern uh, Texas shores. We could see some tropical storm conditions already setting in there from Port Isabel up to Corpus Christi, at least in the gusty bands. As early as Sunday afternoon, we'll definitely be watching some of these bands further north on the Texas shores for isolated tornadoes. Even weak tropical systems like this GFS model indicates it will still be probably a low-end hurricane or a strong tropical storm. They can definitely pack a punch on those outer bands. So really in the Houston area, down to the coast, surrounding spots there, even at far southwestern Louisiana, you need to be on alert Sunday going into Monday for some of those bands that could produce isolated tornadoes. This is late Sunday evening. Notice the heavy rain there right off the Texas coastline. We'll probably still be seeing some of those outer bands trying to produce some spin-ups and some heavy rain and gusty winds there along the immediate Texas shorelines, but nothing really picking up too bad there. We'll have some influence on those thunderstorms there in Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida, by the way, from this storm. I just wanted to point that out. But here's when things really pick up. This is as we go towards 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7 in the morning to even 8 on our Monday, July 8th. This is going to be the main day for impacts here from Corpus Christi to Bay City to Galveston. This is probably going to be a smaller system. It's not going to be covering the entire Texas shoreline all at one point with its worst impacts, but we're definitely going to see those compact winds and that strongest wind field of hurricane force gusts really starting to pick on up there from Corpus Christi over to the Bay City. If you're on the coastline there, Port Lavaca right in between, this is where we're going to really see the heaviest rain, the gustiest winds, some of the worst surge moving into those bays as well. Don't underestimate it there in Houston, Galveston, though either will have that eastern side, so we'll definitely see gusty winds and heavy rain pushing through there. Some of that heavy rain, according to this model, heading north towards Austin all the way up to Texarkana by 5 p.m. on our Monday or 4 p.m. Central Time. Down there towards the coast, still looking at some minor surge probably continuing with south to north winds behind the system. Heavy rainfall still late Monday into early Tuesday, but I really think Monday night going into early Tuesday, that's when things will begin to wind down unless you're in far southeast Texas from Victoria southward probably clearing out while this heavy rain continues in northeast Texas, northern Louisiana, as well as a lot of Arkansas. Again, though, we're clearing things out down there towards Victoria, so that's good news. We'll probably be starting to see the surge wane, the heaviest rain begin to wane on down as well. But things won't be winding down further northeast. We'll definitely see some showers and thunderstorms into our Tuesday and Wednesday on the eastern side of this leftover circulation. All of this is east of the circulation, which will still be near Arkansas Tuesday going into Wednesday. Nonetheless, a lot of heavy rain expected in some parts of the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, and Great Lakes, even the Mid-Atlantic and Southeast. A lot of this also being influenced, by the way, by this system as it kind of combines with a front there in that region. But I digress from that. We'll talk a little bit more about inland impacts here in a minute. Let's look at those tropical storm warnings and those hurricane warnings that we have up at this time from the latest advisory. If you're in the yellow, that is a tropical storm warning. So down here from the far southern shores of Texas and Port Isabel, all the way on up here to the Kingsville area. This is where sustained winds of 35 to 40 miles per hour plus are definitely still a possibility, if not a likelihood. So get ready for that along the coastline coming out of Sunday into early Monday for those locations. On up here towards Corpus Christi, we've got Port Aransas. These are going to be some spots here where we get hurricane conditions, at least expected. That could mean that we have some of those winds or definitely some of those gusts getting upwards of 70 to 75 miles per hour there, as well as in Rockport going out of late Sunday and especially I think into the early to mid morning time frame on Monday. That will be some of the peak spot times for there. Port Lavaca, Victoria. You'll see some of those hurricane impacts, especially as you go closer to the coastline from those locations into our Monday morning. Bay City, I hope you have made your preparations as well. We do have a hurricane warning for you. And again, even if you're not on the location I'm mentioning, make sure you're looking on screen because a lot of other coastal and even some inland areas that I'm not mentioning are under these watches and warnings. We have an X over Houston because you are not under a tropical storm warning actively, but down there to your south in places like Galveston, there is one. Lake Jackson, West Columbia down there, over back on over towards League City and Texas City. These are spots where we do have tropical storm conditions expected. It's really going to be along those coastal spots where we see the immediate push of these kinds of winds just because the storm 
at least according to most models, is not going to be, you know, quite as intense as Cat 2, Cat 3, Cat 4 strength. Here are those gusts from the GFS model. I think it does a great job painting the picture that, again, between Corpus and Houston, particularly impacting places like Port Lavaca right there, that's where we're going to have the worst surge and the worst of these wind gusts. Around Monday, 4 to 5 to 6 to 7 in the morning, that's when that heaviest rain and those gustiest winds are probably going to be in this location. Some of those wind gusts upwards of 50 to 70 to 80 miles per hour. But again, notice that is in a very small corridor for the worst of these winds. Out there on the fringes of those greens, if you notice that you live in those areas, that's where we're in closer to 30 miles per hour to 40 for some of those gusts. Here we go, pushing inland towards places like College Station as Monday goes on, surrounding suburbs there as well between Houston and Dallas. Probably some 30 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts, depending on whether you're in the greens or the yellows or the oranges here on screen. Then And then I think the winds really begin to die out other than some 20 miles per hour uh, winds continuing northeastward from this point. But notice where those 40 mile per hour gusts really die out on the southeast side of Dallas uh, in places like Tyler. Between Tyler and Dallas, this is where we're going to see those highest wind gusts there into our late Monday into early Tuesday. In terms of rainfall, we're very concerned about the water. We'll talk about the storm surge kind of water in a second, but this is just through the early to mid part of Monday. This is as we go towards 2 p.m. Just through this time, already seeing four to six inches of rain in some of those local spots, especially around Port Lavaca and Rockport, already falling we're definitely going to have some life-threatening heavy rainfall so please stay off those roads you know i'm sure there's not many evacuation orders in this area don't be out driving in these kinds of conditions just you know stay put for a day here as these heavy rains continue towards parts of northeastern quadrant of texas there into our early tuesday july 9th that's where some of the heaviest rain will be between tyler and dallas and just northeast of austin and then the Texarkana area will get hit by some of that rainfall as well. We'll talk about totals northeastward from there in just a second. Peak storm surge forecast looks like this. Notice where we've got the yellows on screen from the mouth of the Rio Grande up to Corpus Christi, over to Matagorda Bay, all the way in over there to Galveston Bay. This is where at least two feet of storm surge is expected, but in many cases it'll be upwards of four to six. Again, if you live near Port Lavaca, Matagorda Bay, these are the locations where I really think we're going to have some of the highest surge as those southerly winds even continue behind this system as it pulls inland. Saltwater and freshwater flooding likely there. Southwest Louisiana shores definitely looking at at least a foot or two of some storm surge. And rip currents will be a problem all along the coastline. In fact, let's look at those key messages for Tropical Storm Barrel which is, again, soon to become a hurricane once again, more than likely. I want to skip over a lot of this, but I do want to point out a few things. Again, let's go to three and four. Flash and urban flooding, some of which may be locally considerable, is very likely across portions of the Texas Gulf Coast and eastern Texas beginning late Sunday through the middle of next week. River flooding, also a possibility. And then rip currents will cause life-threatening beach conditions through the weekend across much of the Gulf Coast. Not just Texas, much of the Gulf Coast here, so make sure you're paying attention to that. Louisiana, Mississippi, Florida. Uh, and, and again, make sure you're heeding warnings from lifeguards in those locations. wanted to point those two out because that's stuff we haven't talked about quite as much as, say, you know, where we have watches and warnings. The severe scale for Sunday, July 7th of 2024 looks like this. This is my own W severe scale. It goes from 1 to 7 for severe weather risks. First of all, scat small belts of severe, scattered severe weather potential appear evident for Sunday, the Oklahoma level 3 of 7 zone. We will have some storms going there. Just because we have a tropical system doesn't mean we don't have other storms. There will be some initially individual cells that merge into some clusters more than likely as the evening goes on. Damaging winds, the main threat there. Some parts of the Red River Valley over to Oklahoma City being impacted by that. Meanwhile, the main point and the reason I brought this up Notice in the Houston, Texas area on Sunday, this will push a little bit northeast of there into Monday. This is where we have a level 3 of 7 driven by tornadoes in those outer bands on that northeastern and eastern side of the storm as it pulls on through. That's what we'll be watching. Here we go, timing this out further inland as well, into our late Monday. This is where the storm is likely to be located between Dallas and Houston, Monday at 11 p.m. Those bands in far southeast Texas into even Louisiana, maybe even southern and western Mississippi. These are going to be the ones we'll watch for isolated tornadoes. Then, by the time we go towards Tuesday, the center of low pressure lagging behind some of the heaviest rain. But nonetheless, Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Tennessee, Kentucky, in the Memphis and Paducah regions there. This is where this particular model, as well as the GFS, really continue to bring that heaviest rain through Tuesday. On the far eastern side of that low, coming out of Mississippi, maybe into parts of Arkansas, Tennessee, and Kentucky, wouldn't be surprised if we try to see a spin-up chance try to get going there. 
I really don't think this is going to be too big of a tornado producer once it begins going inland, though. Rain is just going to be the main concern. Models split a little bit at this point in time, but anywhere from Michigan and Illinois and Indiana all the way over to the Carolinas and Mid-Atlantic, I think we'll have an active sort of day in spots, to say the least, Wednesday, July 10th. The GFS model has that heavier rain swath you see there in Illinois and Indiana being further south, though. So that's what we'll have to keep monitoring for inland areas as barrel continues to affect the pattern. One last graphic I want to show you is that total precipitation for inland zones. Through Tuesday going into Wednesday, the heaviest rain is definitely more than likely going to be back here. Arkansas, Missouri, far southern Illinois, southwestern Kentucky, western and Tennessee as well, where we'll have those totals, especially in those reddish shades, going upwards of two to three inches. Locally, and this could be the case back down there in southwestern Arkansas, we'll see some eight to 12 inch totals in some of those whitish shades. The rain will continue to die off as this makes its way towards the northeast, but Indiana, Ohio, even on down there to the Carolinas where we could see a southerly influence there, trying to pull into the system, maybe even off the Atlantic Ocean. Some spots with thunderstorms could pick up two to four inches plus. I'll keep you updated on everything, weather, even if it's on land, I've got you covered. Normally I don't even do the tropical updates, but this is important, so I like getting that important information out to you. That's it for this video. I'll see you next time. One Nation Weather.